Best of r slash malicious compliance episode 133. Subscribe for edit videos daily. A customer gets frozen milk, eggs and cheese. First a little backstory. I work as a deliver driver for a store. People order groceries and the store collects them and I deliver them. We have 5 cars driving on a typical day and every car has a freezer and a cooling unit on the roof. When people order they can add a message to the driver. Today I had a customer and I got the feeling he is a giant a-hole from the way he complained and the message that the food wasn't cold enough last time. Our cars stay around 47 degrees Celsius. The customer stated that everything that is cold has to go to the freezer. So, in the freezer they went, minus 20 degrees Celsius. At this point I should mention that he was the last delivery. His food was in the freezer for 1, 5 hours. When I arrived at his house I checked if the items were frozen. Yes, yes they were. Bilks weren't fully frozen but enough that you couldn't drink them. I started to unload the bags on his door. He asked why 3 of the grocery bags were cold. I told him that he asked them to be in the freezer. I was right the whole time. He was and probably still is. An a-hole. Then he just starts ranting about I should know what he meant and swearing pretty much. I showed him the printed receipt that stated that every item that has to be cool I have to put them in the freezer. The I thanked him and told have a good day with the biggest smile I could. He let out a little grunt and closed the door. I could hear him swearing through the door. Then I gleefully walked to my car and went back to the store. He had already called there and complained. The worker who answered the phone told him the same thing I said. You asked for it and you got it what is the problem? If he hasn't been so rude in the message I would have just put his stuff in the back and make sure they are as cold as possible. For those of you who think this was a little extreme. The message contained only very rude orders and slandering of my colleague. TL. DR rude customer is rude and gets frozen milk, eggs and cheese like he asked for. Sorry for possible broken English. Not a native language to me. Thank you. Next. No. I won't do your part in our group project. In my university, most of the lessons don't have an attendance requirement, and they upload the video recording of the lecture and lecture notes to the school system. When I have questions I prefer to send an email or give a visit to the professor at his slasher office hours. So I see no reason to physically attend the lessons. The only downside that I rarely know the other students taking the same lesson. This becomes a problem in some courses when there is a mandatory group project. That's mean you are not even able to upload the project to the school system unless you choose your group members. I always end up with the other people who have nothing to do with school and do absolutely nothing to help with the project. After multiple projects which I had to do other people's parts, I had enough. And that's where our malicious compliance begins. In one of the hardest courses in our department, we had a massive 6 people project which was 40% of our total grade. Now to pass the course you had to take a minimum of 50% that's mean with a good project you can almost guarantee that you can pass the course. With a minimum grade but this is still a big deal since on average people take this course 3 times before passing it. We had 2 months to finish the project and for the first 2 weeks I emailed, messaged, called my team members about the project but they always had some excuse about why they can't join the meetings and why they can't talk right now. So, in the end, I separated our roles in the project and sent them an email showing who is responsible for what. I finished my part on the project rather quickly and I started to wait. A week before the deadline my group members noticed that this time nobody did their part. There was chaos, they were panicking and they were angry group was filled with messages like why nobody did the project and what they were going to do now. I was enjoying to read their angry and desperate messages, but of course, I am not heartless so I explained to them what they should do and how they can do it. I even sent them some links to tutorials and example projects similar to ours. With enough effort there was still enough time to do something decent. Time was passing and they were getting even more desperate but they were still doing nothing. Some of them called me and tried to arrange meeting but I gave the exact same excuses they gave me month ago and told them I already finished my part so they don't have to worry about me. They tried to convince me to help, but every time I said I would love to help but insert one of the excuses that person gave me before so I can't help. Last day of the deadline I asked them to send me to the part they did, which they responded with they will try to send something in a couple of days. Now there is a 10% punishment for each day past the deadline, 
so I said no I am sending it today, so send me the part you completed. Realizing they are going to get zero, they insisted that for my part I write their name too. I simply answered with no and I ignored the rest of the messages they wrote. A couple of hours before the deadline I sent the project with the documentations explaining the project and who did which part. Now 10% of the project's grade was sending a working project so I was waiting for a maximum of 90 slash 100 but I was also worried because 80% of the project was missing and perhaps prof can decide to give zero to everyone. But luckily this didn't happen and I actually got 90 points while my other team members got one big juicy zero. Thank you. Next. Lipstick on your teeth. One Sunday after church, my mom was chatting with people. I pulled on her skirt and said, Mom, comma, no P, don't interrupt, apostrophe. She continued chatting. Again I pull on her skirt, Mom, apostrophe, O P, don't interrupt, apostrophe. She finishes chatting. What do you want? Apostrophe. You have lipstick on your teeth. Apostrophe. Why didn't you tell me? Apostrophe. Thank you. Next. I guess I'll reply to all. I'm a software developer. My department and another department each made different products, but a customer would often have both, and these products need to communicate with each other. Both teams had the task of adding a feature which requires some modification to how the products communicate. Communication is done via a published protocol, which means that our two teams just need to follow the spec, which is great. The teams are in different countries, so time zones make direct collaboration somewhat challenging. My team finished our changes, and so I reached out to my counterpart on the other team to arrange for testing our products together. They were still working on it, and that was all I heard from them for a while. That's fine, we were ahead of schedule, I can't wait until they're ready. I set up a sample installation on a spare server, and told them how to access it remotely, and asked that they let me know if they need anything. A week or two passed before they were ready, and they started testing on a Friday. They encountered some problems, so they sent me an email. Because of the time zones, this was past my working hours, and I wasn't checking my work email. When I didn't reply, they wrote another email, CCing their boss and my boss. When a reply to that email didn't come quickly enough, they CC'd even higher on the chain of command, demanding that my team work to fix the problem. They further stated that if the problem was not immediately fixed, their release would be late, and it would entirely be my team's fault. On Saturday, I got a call from my boss explaining the situation. He politely asked me if I could spare some time to come in on the weekend to troubleshoot the problem. I agreed. I spent some time reading log files and packet captures, and comparing system behavior to the spec. Soon enough, I found the problem. Their project was sending messages that did not conform to the spec. I was able to simulate the bad message, and a fixed version of that message to confirm that our product handled both as it should. Nobody from the other team was online. So I sent my report by email. Remember how they sent that email blaming my team for their problems? The email that went to their boss, their boss is his boss, my boss and my boss's boss? Yeah, that was the email I replied to, replying to all. I very politely and professionally explained exactly what the problem was, making sure my explanation would be clear to those upper level managers, before going into the technical details and what changes they would need to make to fix the problem. Clicking the send button has never felt so satisfying. Working on the weekend resulted me in being in a much better mood than if I'd stayed home the whole time. And per department policy, I took some comp time during the week to make up for those weekend hours. This was my first time working with this team, but from what others told me, this wasn't an unusual experience. A few years later, the company was restructured and that office was closed down completely. Thank you. Next. Write with blood if I have to. Fine. Long time lurker. First time poster. I'm on PC but English is not my native language. This happened to a classmate of mine, and I was lucky enough to witness it. A couple of years ago in high school, we were going to take a regular exam for a class I don't remember. The exam was right after our recess, and lucky for us. The teacher that would supervise us during the exam was one of the worst teachers most of us have ever seen. This teacher was also a sub, 
Coming from another high school where teachers could abuse students as much as they liked, my high school had a much higher pay than hers, so she wanted to be a good sub and get hired as a full-time staff. Let's call my friend as Frank, and teacher as Karen. We sat down, attendance taken and Karen gave us the green light to start the exam. Suddenly Frank says damn it which gets the attention of Karen and the following conversation ensues. Frank, mom, my pencil is broken. He was using a mechanical pencil. Can I get one from a friend? Karen, no you can't. I told everyone before the exam that I would not allow pencil or eraser swapping. You should have checked it. She said this during our recess time. So unless you came 6-7 minutes early you wouldn't know it. Frank, it was working. It got broken when I was solving the first question. Look I even wrote my name with it. Karen, I don't care. Not my problem. Frank, Sue, what am I supposed to do then? Karen, I told you, I don't care. Write with blood with you have to. At this point there is a small silence, and Karen has a small smile on her face, thinking she has won over a high school student and satisfied her ego. In my high school we had two vice principals. And one of them would be checking every exam room at the beginning of an exam to make sure everything is okay attendance. Missing exam sheet CTC. And we had glass class walls so you could see outside pretty easily. Frank spotting the vice principal is about to enter the classroom. Frank, mom can I get up to take a pin from the pin board? We had one in every classroom. Karen, what? Why? Frank waits for a few seconds for vice principal to enter. When she enters. Frank, you told me to write in blood if I have to, since you don't let me borrow a pencil from a friend and I don't want to get zero from this exam, I would like to get a pin to put a hole in my finger and write with my blood. Vice principal is shook, looking horrified and just frozen. Vice principal, what are you talking about Frank? Frank, mom my pencil got broken during the first question. I asked permission from Karen to borrow a pencil from my classmates but she said I can't. She doesn't care what I do, and that I can use my blood if I want to. So I wanted to use my blood to write and not get a zero on an exam. Vice principal looks at the class with a puzzled face as we all shook our heads confirming Frank and some even say he is right mom. Vice principal looks mad, but won't say anything during an exam, in front of an entire class. Vice principal, Frank take a pencil from your friend, of course you can't use your blood to write in any case. If anyone else needs, they can also borrow pencils or erasers. Vice principal storms off the class as Karen throws a death glare to Frank. We learn a couple of weeks later that vice principal tore Karen a new one for being so stupid. Karen was overall a very bad teacher and had a ton of complaints about her within just a semester. At the end, she was sent away one week before the semester ended. We were already done with the curriculum so there was no missed material, and of course, she wasn't hired as a full-time staff. Edit. Abbreviations changed as requested. Thank you. Next. My dad says he'll pick me up at dark. Well, he hasn't picked me up, so it must not be dark. This happened about 10 years ago now, and I have a good chuckle about it every time I pass the place in my car. I'm a pretty meek guy, so this is probably the only rebellious thing I did in my entire teenage life. My dad owns a farm, and... Being his son, this meant that I had a job when I was a kid whether I liked it or not. Mostly I understood this, but that didn't mean I had to like it. I resented having to spend entire days of summer vacation, dawn to dusk, in a tractor when it came time to harvest alfalfa, which we did four times between spring and fall. Basically imagine a teenager with ADHD forced to sit in one place for 14 hours, and you'll understand how it felt. Honestly, if I wasn't a total introvert, I might have snapped sooner. So anyway, it's the second day of harvest, and it's getting to be late in the afternoon. I've spent about 20 hours total in a hay beam by this point over the past few days, and I ask my dad which fields to cut next, and I ask him when I'll be done, hoping, in vain, that I can leave and go play video games or whatever. This is where the titular line comes in, I'll pick you up at dark. Little does he know that my little teenage heart is clenched with righteous anger for all this wasted, paid, time. So several hours pass, and I'm understandably getting pretty irritable. It starts getting dark, and guess what? No sign of my dad. At the time, 
It was becoming a bit of a recurring joke in my family about how my dad was always late, so I knew I was in for the long haul. Then it occurred to me, and the malicious compliance begins. My dad said he'd pick me up at dark, and he wasn't picking me up, so that must mean that it wasn't dark yet. And what don't you need if it's not dark outside? That's right. Headlights. So I continue going back and forth on this wide, empty field, squinting as the light continues to fade after sunset and stubbornly refuse to turn on the headlights. I can easily see the edges of the field of course, but everything else is blending in pretty well. I start purposely AMD accidentally leaving some shark fins, which are what we call the mistakes that hay bean operators leave between rows when they don't get any alfalfa. A few small shark fins per field are fine, even expected, but these are on a whole new level. My dad shows up after about 30 minutes of total darkness. I forget our exact conversation, but I do remember the result. After asking me why I didn't turn on the lights, and me telling him why, he laughed uproariously, and I still remember it fondly to this day. I never did get any punishment. I'm not even sure he understood the extent of the mist alfalfa. It was dark after all and it was hard to see in the dim moonlight, but whatever, it was just a few rows. I, however, like to think he was a little proud of me, because I was the type of teenager who never got into mischief. I asked him about it recently, and unfortunately he has no memory of the incident. Oh well. I, however, will probably remember this little bit of malicious compliance fondly for the rest of my life. It might have been pretty insignificant, and motivated by laziness, but it was also the first time I really stood up for myself against an authority figure. Thank you. Next. Revenge of the dishwasher. Okay so I had posted here forever ago. Seriously? over a candy bar, and mentioned my dad and got a lot of requests for his stories, so I finally found one that I witnessed. I couldn't decide if this belonged here or on the petty revenge sub so I'll let you guys decide. Same deal as last time, kind of a long story, this was an all day job, I have trouble with grammar and punctuation so be easy and I'm mobile. So a little backstory, my dad's older sister, aunt, is a hard person to nail down. Sometimes she is the sweetest person you've ever met other times she is a total Karen. Well a few months back her husband, my uncle passed away, RIP, and it was a total shock to everyone and then right after the world stopped leaving her with only my cousin which has brought out much more of her Karen side. The story. So with everything starting to reopen and it being okay to have small gatherings again my dad and I went down to visit my aunt. She had gotten a new dishwasher and my dad nearly flipped when he found out she was going to pay someone a ridiculous amount of money. I don't remember exact amount but it was a few hundred more than when my mom got hers installed. Do we drove down to her house so my dad could install it for free. So we get there and the fun begins right away. My aunt complains about where I parked. It was next to her. I drove because my car is newer than dad's, so I moved. Then she complained about parking there because the guy she had paid to cut her lawn was coming so I moved again. All this time she isn't telling me where she wants me to park either she's just telling me I picked bad places despite her enormous driveway. And after two or three more times of playing Simon says I end up on the other side of her car which she decides is perfect. So we go in and I greet my cousin who I haven't seen for about a year due to her being in college. She's awesome and not entitled at all. Her and I sit around and chat for a while and my dad gets to work on the dishwasher. At first aunt was super nice offering me snacks, trying to make my dad sit down and have coffee, etc. But dad wanted to get the job done because he lives 2 hours away and I live 2 hours north of him but was staying with him for the weekend which was how I got roped into this. My aunt starts going on about how she is so happy to finally have a dishwasher that will be flat against the counter. Starts questioning if my dad is doing it right and overall slowly turning from Dr. Jekyll to me. Hide. Then she comes in and interrupts my cousin and I's conversation to ask me about my job and stuff while only half listening when I answer her questions. I knew she was only half listening because I'd talk about something and then immediately after I'd stopped talking she would ask me a question about what I just told her so it was a lot of repeating myself. Then she starts in on my looks, how I've gained weight. How my hair would be so much prettier if I straightened it and brushed it properly. My hair is straight and long and I brush it just fine it's just a little frizzy sometimes. And so on. 
I'm self-conscious about my looks especially because my cousin is a pageant queen. Explain a lot about Aunt Hup, and I'm not exactly skinny. I'm squishy but not fat. So instantly my self-esteem is going down and my cousin steps into the rescue and starts changing the subject to lunch. My aunt is distracted and instantly tells us we are ordering Chinese food, knowing I hate the Chinese place that she always orders from and my dad only eats Chinese food on my birthday. She goes in telling my cousin to get lunch specials. My cousin explains that due to them only doing curbside that they are not doing lunch specials. My aunt doesn't like this answer and tells cousin to check their website. This starts a whole argument where my cousin has to check not only their website but their Facebook page and has to call them and ask about lunch specials just to appease my aunt who even went as far as to demand my cousin ask them to make an exception. I tell her it's fine because that place typically had lunch specials with shellfish in them which I'm allergic to. I've told my aunt this a thousand times and every time is like Groundhog's Day and the same conversation always ensues. Are you sure? You ate it when you were little. Could it have been something else you reacted to? What about lobster? Are you sure it's all shellfish? Yeah I hate that conversation. So we decided what to order and shocker my aunt got shellfish. They make these crab things that look exactly like their chicken fingers so immediately that out for me. I ordered fried rice and beef teriyaki for me and my dad. Cousin goes to get it and comes back. Aunt immediately dumps most everything on a plate including the chicken fingers and the fried crab things together on top of the beef teriyaki so I can't tell which is which. I ended up eating most of the fried rice which of course I heard about. At this point through lunch my aunt is laying into my cousin about everything that's bothering her that day. Her attitude, how lazy she is, her boyfriend and how lazy he is, in front of me and my dad. I tried to change the subject but it always looped around to my cousin. My dad was pissed and when we finished lunch my cousin wrapped up the leftovers and said she was taking them to her boyfriend because he was doing summer work and hadn't eaten today. She then looked at me and invited me along I don't think I've ever ran out the door so fast in my life and I felt bad for ditching my dad. This happened while we were gone do I heard it second hand. My aunt then laid into my dad about the dishwasher again and my dad had the horrible realization that he was missing a hose that my aunt forgot to buy separately so now my dad had to go to the store with my aunt. The entire way there she complained about my cousin, my other aunt in Florida, my dad's attitude and how my brother never comes with us for visits, he can't stand aunt. They get to the store and my dad thinks he knows where the part is but my aunt demands help from the cashier. She goes full blown Karen being rude to this poor girl who is just a cashier and doesn't know much about the stuff they sell and my aunt berated her almost the entire time calling her names even that I won't repeat to keep this clean but they sounded similar to Cupid dumb bass. My dad is stunned to silence as he witnesses this and just as this girl is about to cry he finally finds his voice and cuts in, stepping between the girl and my aunt, hands the girl a 10 and thanks her for her help and tells her she can let them be now. The girl practically runs for the hills at this point and my dad turns and lays into my aunt now. Dad, what is your problem? Aunt, what? Dad, why are you being so mean to everyone? Aunt, W well I'm not meaning to my husband did just die after all. Dad, aunt's name you were a witch, not witch, before that so don't pull that on me. My dad then walks off and finds the part. He buys it with my aunt being strangely quiet the entire time and my dad is even careful not to go to the same cashier that helped them. My aunt drove back to the house after like a maniac and yelled at my dad which he says he tuned out. When they got back to the house cousin and I had also just gotten back and aunt began yelling about how my dad embarrassed her. My dad had enough this point and they started arguing my cousin and I escaped to the den to watch Disney movies while this was over where my aunt uttered the famous words just finish the dishwasher. Insert evil laugh as my dad remembers her bragging about how her dishwasher will be flat against the counter. Dad agrees and goes about installing the dishwasher except he puts the brackets in backwards on purpose so when he is done an hour or two later, it sticks out of the counter by about an inch. Not enough to walk into and hurt yourself but enough to really irritate my aunt. She starts yelling at my dad that he did it wrong and my dad shrugs and says that if we don't leave now we will probably hit rush hour traffic so he grabs me while my aunt is still complaining and we run for the car. My cousin texted me on the way home saying aunt hadn't stopped grumbling about it since we had left and she thought it was hilarious. Please don't be a Karen guys. 
particularly not to my dad. He's an owl in all the best ways. Sorry the revenge was so small but if it helps my mom called last night to check on my aunt and my aunt is still complaining about it. My parents are divorced but my mom is still in contact with my dad's family and they're still okay friends. So it really bugs her that much. Edit. I forgot a TLDR. TLDR. Aunt is a jerk to everyone. Dad isn't having it. Aunt tells him to install the dishwasher so he does.